Okay, before I start off the tutorial, I just want to mention two things. Number one, there's a new Anime Studio available. It's Anime Studio 6. It's got some nice new features, and the user interface has been changed completely. Uh, but I won't be getting it, because I don't have the money to spend on upgrading. So the tutorials will remain in Anime Studio 5. Uh, the features should still be able to work in the next version, so if you buy the new version, you should be able to follow the tutorials. If you're interested in more tutorials, uh, there's a user called NG Stalagmite, and he's making Anime Studio tutorials as well. They're slightly different in style, and they'll help you in different ways, but they're definitely worth a look at. So click on the screen to go to his channel. Okay, to start off, we'll start with a Anime Studio file, like so. Now, we'll start off drawing a box. Just move it over to the side. Draw another box, like so. Copy and paste. Move it over. And now we can draw an axe head. So, draw a box. Change the shape a bit. Then add this in the front. Sharpen that to make it look more like an axe. Just adjust it so it doesn't look rubbish. Okay, so there we got our axe and box. Move the box over a bit. Okay. Now what we need to do is colour it in, obviously. So I'm going to use the NTSC colours. Make sure that the box is the thing that is in front. I'm going to change the colours, make them a bit darker. Okay, there we have our axe and our box. And now we're going to add some bones. First of all, let's name this so we know what this is. Machine. And we add a bone layer. And put that inside, like that. So when you close it, it disappears. It's machine again. Right. Now remember, you have to add the bones in the right order. So, add one here. Then one here. Then one here. Okay. Now we can go to frame one and change the position of them. Trouble is, when I try to move this bone, it moves the whole machine. I don't want that to happen. That just looks rubbish. And I could change the uh, the influence of the bone so it only influences less. But even with that, it's still affecting too much. The way to solve this is to only uh, make the bones affect certain points. To do this, you have to be on frame zero, and you go into the vector layer, not the bone layer. You select the bone, and then you use the bind points tool to select the points you want binded, and you press space. Now nothing looks like it's happened, but it has. And do the same with the other ones. You only want that to affect that. You only want that to affect that. So now if you click on the bone, you'll see what points are being controlled by that. Now you can go back to here and you can change the influences to whatever you want, however big you want. They are not going to affect a thing except for what you have selected, which is very useful when doing something that you need to only have certain points. Okay, so now that's sorted out, we can move it into position. So move this onto the end of that. Notice I'm using the rotate tool this time rather than the manipulate bones, because manipulate bones manipulates the parents as well. We don't want that at the moment. So this one only affects the bone. 
Okay, so that's how it starts off, looking like that. So we'll go to one second, and we'll rotate this out here. Keep that down. You see that the axe comes out the bottom, but that doesn't matter because it's outside what will be rendered. If you do want to solve that, you can just go to the in-between frame and move it up. And keep doing that until you've solved the problem. But I'm just going to leave it because it's fine. Okay. We'll move this up a bit because it's a bit too low. Okay, so we have the first bit. Now we could straight away just move up the second bit. So then it moves like this. It would be better to make it look a bit more like a machine, to have a small pause. So it just stops. So we copy and paste the frames so it stays exactly the same for six frames. Okay, then once we've done that, we can start to make it full. Now let's extend the timeline, press Alt and click. Now we'll start off having it only go down a little bit, over one second. And then in half a second, we'll do the rest. I don't know if that's right, we'll see how it looks. So it starts full, then bang. Maybe a little bit faster. There we go. Now, the trouble with this is the axe comes up, that's fine. And as it starts full, it hits the ground and nothing. You don't feel that hit the ground. So what we're going to do is a simple camera shake. Let's go to 78, and let's move down the timeline until we can see the camera, which is down here. Now first of all we need to make sure that we put a camera on the point of impact looking right still because otherwise if you move it the whole animation will be with the thing moving and we don't want it moving up and down. So make sure you have a frame that just keeps it in the place it's always been. If you want you can copy the first frame and paste it. There you go, it won't move in between these two points. Then we want to move violently now. Let's move down, up, down, let's copy that, and then copy that one to make it go back into the original position. So if you, if once it hits, it shakes the ground, makes it look more impressive. If you think it's too many shakes, you could just delete a couple of frames. So you think you got the shake right. So we have it. Hammer coming out and slamming on the floor. Now we'll just export that. Let's call it Axe. And let's use DivX decoder. Now that's rendering. Okay, and that's what it looks like exported. I'm now taking requests for tutorials after this, so if you go to my channel you'll be able to see a list of all the requests so far. Now if you want to download the finished anime file or you want to download the video file, just click one of the links in the sidebar.